Hey, my name is Petra Cruz, and I'm obsessed with all things birth, but especially VBAC. I am a birth doula and mom who had a vaginal birth after three cesareans. In this podcast, we dive deep into the inspirational world of vaginal birth after cesarean. In each episode, you'll hear inspiring VBAC stories, practical tips from professionals who champion the VBAC cause, as well as my personal journey and how it might help you on yours. From mindset shifts to evidence-based practices, you'll leave each episode feeling inspired and informed. Get ready to soak in the wisdom, embrace the strength within, and join this incredible VBAC community. This is the VBAC Junkie Podcast. So this episode for this week is just a little bit different, but still relatable to VBAC. So today is May 1st, if you're listening to this in real time, and May is Maternal Mental Health Month. So you can experience like mental health issues um, at any time during your pregnancy or after. So what is World Maternal Mental Health? It was created by maternal mental health advocates to raise awareness of the mental health challenges that mothers face after birth. These challenges can range from mild baby blues to more serious conditions like postpartum depression and anxiety. I have definitely dealt with both of those conditions. So why is maternal mental health important? Well, obviously, our mental health is always important. Um, But, you know, it, it not only impacts us, but it also impacts our kids and our families. And when we are struggling mentally, it can affect everything from breastfeeding to bonding or like overall family well-being, because if we're not feeling good mentally, we're not going to want to do the things that we're normally happy to do. Like they could be just like even going on a trip. You know, if you're suffering from this type of mental health condition, you might even not want to do what you used to perceive to be fun. And that is huge. It's huge. And we really need to talk about it. And I want mental health to come into the light because it's not okay for us to sweep it under the rug. It's not okay for us to feel like we can't talk about it because for so long, I I personally struggled mentally because I was struggling. I was just struggling with, you know, having a cesarean And then, you know, having a new being to take care of after having major abdominal surgery, taking care of other kids and, you know, forgetting about myself, just trying to survive the day. So if you might have heard of a few of these, um, but I'm going to kind of let you know what are the different types of mental health challenges that you might experience. So that could be baby blues. These are like short-lived feelings of sadness, irritability, and anxiety that affect a lot of moms in the first few days after birth because of that huge hormonal shift that we go through. And But typically, this goes away on, their, on its own within a week or two. So another that you probably hear most often besides baby blues is postpartum depression. So this is a more serious condition that can last for weeks, months, or even longer. Symptoms include persistent sadness, feelings of like hopelessness, loss of interest in activities you used to enjoy, like I like I just talked about, changes in appetite or sleep, and even difficulty concentrating on simple tasks like making your coffee or, you know, just things like that. Another um, that you may have heard of is postpartum anxiety. This involves excessive worry, fear, and physical symptoms like racing heart, shortness of breath, and muscle tension. I definitely experienced this. I would have like irrational fears of like something happening to my baby. So like I didn't want anybody to come over. I didn't want anybody to hold my baby because I thought something was going to happen to them if if they were in somebody else's hands. Um And I just like kept thinking, you know, I mean, we all, a lot of us have the thinking of like, my baby's not getting enough food. I'm not breastfeeding well enough. My milk's not coming. Oh my gosh, I got to start formula right away because we're just like worrying like excessively. Of course, there's a normal 
a normal um, amount of worry, but when it's like consuming you, like you are constantly fearing or worrying about, you know, something like that, something happening to you, something happening to your, your children or anything like that, or obviously like the physical symptoms. I definitely had like a racing heart, like out of nowhere. And I didn't realize why. Um, so another one is postpartum OCD. This is a type of anxiety disorder characterized by intrusive thoughts and repetitive behaviors. So sometimes postpartum obsessions, like they might include fear of contaminating your baby, dropping the baby, accidentally molesting the child, and extreme feelings of not being a good mother or caregiver. And, you know, some other things that you might do physically is like have these compulsions, which might include repeatedly washing or excessively checking on the baby or avoiding or neglecting the baby. So these are just a few of um, the different types of explanations of what postpartum OCD can look like. Um, there are more symptoms that are out there, um, but these are just a few. Um, postpartum psychosis. Now, this is a rare but very serious condition that can cause hallucinations, delusions, and difficulty thinking clearly. So I did have a podcast episode um, a little further back, and I talked to a woman who experienced postpartum psychosis, and she actually thought that she saw cockroaches crawling underneath her baby's skin, and she was getting the lighter to burn her baby's skin because she thought that was the only way to get the cockroaches out. So that is just one example. Luckily, she didn't do it and her family took her in to get help. But these are just, this is just an example of what that can look like. There's so many different examples of what that can look like, but that's just one. Um, so like I said, my own postpartum struggles, I really did struggle because I, you know, not only did I feel like I had to do everything myself, but I just didn't want anybody to know that I was struggling mentally. So when everyone was like, how are you doing? I'd be like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm great. You know, and just lie through my teeth when I inside, I was like screaming for help, but I didn't let it verbally come out because I didn't want them to think like I couldn't handle it. And that's just not we don't have to do that. We don't have to suffer in silence because the only person that it's really taking a huge toll on is ourselves because we're holding on to all of that inside of us. So it has nowhere to go. So some of the signs to look for um, either in yourself or in somebody that you think might be struggling with this is feeling sad or down most of the day, every day, loss of interest in activities that you used to enjoy, changes in your appetite or sleep, difficulty concentrating, feeling overwhelmed, irritable, or angry, having thoughts of harming yourself or your baby, withdrawing from friends and family, and feeling like a bad mom. And I got to tell you, if you feel like a bad mom, then that means you're not a bad mom. Because you're worrying that you're a bad mom, which means you're not. Because I feel like someone, someone that is would not be worrying about their child, right? You would be worrying about only yourself and nobody else. So you are doing a great job, okay? And I see you because I am you. I have gone through this. I feel like I have gone <laughs> through fire, fire to get to where I am now. And I'm still healing. I have recently started doing somatic therapy. Now I've done talk therapy before, which does, it can help. But for me personally, like this somatic therapy is like so helpful, like way more helpful than I realized it could be. So you know what? It's, it's okay to get some help. And even if you're not feeling these feelings right now, it's okay to get somebody to talk to. It's okay to already book that appointment before you even have your baby because it's almost like, you know, doing the preventative 
So you're already talking about it so it doesn't get to the point where you feel overwhelmed and hopeless and like you have nowhere to go, right? I feel like maternal mental health is so crucial just because it affects everything. It can affect everything, your relationship, your bonding with your children. And it it's it doesn't just last for the time, you know, immediately postpartum. You can be holding on to that for years because I've held on to my like traumas and depression for years after I gave birth. I had my first child when I was, well, I was a month before I turned 17. So I was still technically 16 when I had her and I never dealt with it because I didn't, I just thought I brought this on myself. You know, I decided to have this baby. So this is my fault. So this is my issue. But I want to, I want to tell you, it's not okay. You deserve to have community around you and supporting you. You deserve it. Why wouldn't you deserve it? Look at everything you've done. You've done amazing. And it's really sad to me that worldwide, as many as one in five women experience some type of perinatal mood disorder. These perinatal mood and anxiety disorders include, you know, like I talked about the postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety, postpartum obsessive compulsive disorders, postpartum even bipolar disorder, and postpartum psychosis. The statistics vary obviously by country, but this is a global concern. Like worldwide, people are struggling. And since we know that we're struggling, why aren't we doing more? You know, why aren't we making it more mainstream to get help when so many women are struggling? And it's estimated that a staggering seven in 10 women hide or downplay their perinatal mood or anxiety disorder symptoms. Without proper understanding, support, and treatment, these mental illnesses can have a devastating impact on all of us, right? Because then it can affect, if we plan to have more children, it can affect that next pregnancy because we've never dealt with the last pregnancy and the depression that came with it. And like I said, it doesn't just affect the mom or, you know, you know, the woman carrying the baby, they can impact the entire family. Many people don't realize that about one in 10 dads develop depression during this time too. So I feel like an integrated approach to family mental health allows both parents to move beyond the postpartum period with support and as a thriving family unit. You know, if, if one in 10 dads develop depression too, why aren't we talking about this? It's not just women. It's the men. It's the parents. It's both parents. And, you know, this doesn't just pertain to women that actually give birth because it's actually estimated that 20 to 25% of pregnancies end in miscarriage or stillbirth. So we have to consider you too, right? Because in addition to the, to the, to the intense grief that they're experiencing through these miscarriages or stillbirths, many of these women also are still experiencing postpartum depression. Giving birth to a premature child or having a child spend time in neonatal intensive care units can also take a toll on maternal mental health. So that is valid. That is valid. And that is a bigger statistic, right? than the first one we talked about. Because now we're not just talking about women who are giving birth to live children. We're talking about women who are experiencing miscarriage, stillbirth, giving birth prematurely, having children in the NICU. It's hard. And it's okay to talk about the hard. It's healing. It's validating. Why shouldn't it be? If we're all experiencing this, then we should be talking about it way more. So I love, I love, love, love that they have this maternal mental health awareness because it's needed. I feel like it's it shouldn't just be a month. It should be like just throughout the year, every year. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, 
I just wanted to welcome you to the month of May and also give you some information about maternal mental health because it is so important. We need this. We need to talk about it. We shouldn't feel shameful about something that happened, the feelings that we're having. We should be able to talk about it without fear of judgment or ridicule or people saying that we're not a good enough mom. So I do obviously want to talk about specifically VBAC. So, you know, this can also be a struggle. Say you're planning a VBAC and you end up not having your VBAC. So you end up having a repeat cesarean and it was unplanned. You know, now you have to deal with that because that is something that you expected to happen and didn't happen. And that is valid. So I just want you to know that no matter what feelings these postpartum struggles come from, no matter what mental health challenge has has come about from what you experienced, even if it's not in a textbook, but you're feeling it, it is valid and you deserve to talk to somebody about it. You deserve to be validated for those feelings. Because just because somebody else doesn't perceive what you're going through as to be hard, doesn't mean that it's not. Because we all have different backgrounds right? And we're all different people. So all of us perceive things differently and all of us handle things differently, right? Because you might be a super sensitive person, but your husband's not and he doesn't take on things like you do because you're an empath, you know, just like stuff like that. So just because somebody says that, you know, this isn't hard, you shouldn't feel this way, doesn't mean anything. All right. So if you or somebody you know are experiencing any of these symptoms, or even if you feel like you're not and you want to like preemptively get help, just for one, please know that you are not alone. And if you want to talk, I am here for you, okay? But if you want to talk to somebody who is more well-trained and more well-versed in postpartum mood and anxiety disorders. I have some resources that I will obviously link in down below. Um, So one is Postpartum Support International, abbreviated PSI. So you can go to their website. And like I said, I will link it down below so that you can just click the link and get there. Um, They also do have a hotline. So it is 1-800-994-4773. And I will also link that. Everything that I say, I'm going to link below. There's also the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Um, Their helpline is 1-800-950-6264. There's a National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. And you just dial 988 on your phone. And there's a crisis text line. You just text home to 741741. Okay. There will be somebody there to help you. And I will link a couple more resources below, but I really feel like it's necessary for us to just like get the help that we need without feeling that guilt. I don't, I can't, I can't talk about it enough because I have gone for far too long feeling guilty, feeling shameful because I I need some outside help. I need some outside validation. I need some outside resources that I might not have had access to if I didn't reach out to these outside resources or this outside help. So please know that it is okay. It is really okay. Um, And if you want to chat further about it, like I said, go ahead and message me. You can go to my Instagram at birthing come true and send me a direct message. All right. Well, that is all for this episode. I do hope that it was helpful. Please make sure that you join me next week for our episode. It is going to be a VBAC story that took place over 40 years ago. And this woman, she's really amazing. Her name is Nancy she is going to tell us her story and we are going to talk about resilience and so many other things. So please feel free to tune into that episode. I can't wait to see you next week. Bye. 
Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the VBAC Junkie podcast. Make sure to leave a rating and subscribe to the show so that you don't miss an episode. And also, I have a free gift for you. If you would like to have a guide on how to prepare for a VBAC, head to my website at www.birthincometrue.com slash VBAC guide. And all of this will be in the show notes. So you can just click that link and head there and download this free guide. I hope you have an amazing week. Until next time. Bye.